everybody. Welcome to the Outlet Podcast Vlogs here on YouTube. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, my name is Gazy. I'm the host of the Outlet Podcast, and I actually do have a podcast on uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry, and some more. Uh, also got some social media going on, everything linked in the description. Um, what I like to do uh, is talk about a number of things, anime, cosplay, movies, things of that nature. Uh, today, uh, we're going into the Soli and Holy vlogs. That's one of my handful of playlists I have here on YouTube, where with the Soli and Holy vlogs, I like to educate and edify. Edify people who are Christians about um, social issues, theology, uh, biblical concepts that you know we believe, but also educate. Educate people who aren't Christians about the inner workings of the church. You know, because I'm not necessarily a televangelist. And, you know, I'm not getting paid to preach the gospel. I don't personally believe that. But speaking of being paid to preach the gospel, I read not too long ago an interesting article from Relevant Magazine. You guys have heard me in times before. Definitely talk about Relevant Magazine. I love them. And I like that they're very social uh, and they're very current, modern day, uh, about the things going on in, the, in Christianity. And the article was titled something along the lines of, we need to pray for our falling pastors. Now, mega church pastors, mega church pastors. And as I read the article, a number of uh, mega church pastors were listed. Their fallings weren't listed, but that's always something you can go look up. And this article caused me to think about a number of different issues, a number of different points that I would love to discuss. Um, and let's just get into it. I I don't think anybody from big church or small church should uh, applaud whatever your stance is on mega churches, whatever they are, whether they're positive stances or negative, um, whatever they are, you shouldn't applaud someone's falling from grace. Um, I don't, that's a weird term to say falling from grace because if it's grace and if it's God's grace, there's no depth that you can fall that won't, that he won't grab you and to bring you back. That's what grace is. So I, I've been, I was thinking about all of these men and women who've fallen and it's like, well, they only fall to the things that I fall to. They only fall to these common sins. Which are, you know, you know, I was, I was like, okay, they were, they were alcoholics, or they were caught doing drugs, or anything like that. So, what's the big deal? I mean, I know what's the big deal. A pastor sins. Well, it's the idea that we have this, of a pastor, very high and holy, right, and above reproach, and they can't be wrong, and they got to be a hundred percent holy, and they can't sin at all, right? Yeah. Um, Here's the thing, guys, when it comes to mega church pastors, um, if a small church pastor can sin, a big church pastor can sin. And more glamorous are the sins of a mega church pastor. It's very sad. It's very sad. You know, because here you have a, a man or a woman who is involved, you know, and who's, who's involved in a thousand, three thousand people, uh, person church who has to deal with a lot of money and trying to allocate it appropriately. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they are also paid. I don't disagree with a pastor being paid because the idea is that that pastor is being paid so they can fully, 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 not part-time pastors, full-time. That's what you do. When someone is when one person is sick in the hospital in your church, you go to see that person. Why? Because that's what your job is supposed to be. Well, that's what your calling is. Uh, if there is a demonic possession, something spiritual going on, you go be there. There's a major problem that, you know, one of the reasons why I um, I don't agree with mega churches is because how can a pastor go name on a name by name basis of all their members. They can't, they can't know their, 
they can't know the sheep. They can't properly uh, discern whether or not their sheep are being fed spiritually. They can't. They don't know. That's the major problem, guys, um, of, a mega, of a mega church pastor. The, the role of a pastor is to tend to the flock, feed the sheep, tend the sheep, just like Pete, John, Jesus said to Peter. But if you got thousands of sheep, you can't do that. Nevertheless, you guys, uh, I, I know it sounds like I'm going like positive and negative, positive and negative, because there are just good things about mega churches. But there are things that are inconsistent with the idea. I don't think there should be mega churches in that regard. But once again, spirit of the times, the zeitgeist. We need America needs mega churches. Um, America needs Christians to, act, to be Christian, but that's another argument. Uh, so the, as the article was going down, saying that mega church pastors need prayer, we need to pray for them, and I totally agree with that. The Apostle Paul says that we should pray without ceasing, and so when you do that, when you when you share that mindset. I am going to pray non-stop. Your body, your mind, your, the, your flesh, your flesh, will try to rationalize and say, Gazy, uh, you just prayed for everybody. But you haven't hit the wall. The Holy Spirit helps us pray, right, guys? The Holy Spirit helps you pray. The Holy Spirit, through groans and utterings, as the, Old, as the New Testament says, will intercede or interpret your prayers, your soul's prayers to God. You know, it's not that you got to go through everybody's name because God knows. God knows and he knows your prayers better than you do because he knows what you're going to say. But it's a matter of you saying it or you being able to say something along those lines or you just being in the spirit. So you might not be praying for your uh, let's see, your Bill Hybels or your T.D. Jakes's, you might not be praying for these guys. But why don't you pray for your local church pastor? You know, it, it's it's hard, guys. And I'm not trying to, like, burden, I wouldn't want to burden you, but if we don't pray for our small pastors, then we won't bring the consciousness, we won't create the consciousness that we need to pray for these big church pastors. These big church pastors... Their churches, off of offerings that are given, they can give to thousands of charities, thousands of dollars in charities. They can give thousands of dollars to missionaries worldwide. They can create uh, um, groups within their church to be able to help uh, families with uh, uh, loved ones in the army, um, drug rehabilitation, uh, alcohol anonymous type things. These... Uh, groups or sects or these clubs they can be created by mega churches the small churches can't do that so we need to be praying for these mega church pastors um, another thing with mega church pastors the amount of stress and this is something they've realized that the small church pastors have had in uh, they've come out with uh, with the proper um, with the proper response mega church pastors as I cited before they can't deal with all of these people now no matter how much you pay someone there's one thing in life money can't do money can't buy time you're watching this video money can't buy this time that you're watching you've donated your time to gain this knowledge and uh, gain this uh, insight pastors no matter look at look at look at the Joel Osteen he can't add one second to his life. Now he can definitely uh, pamper his pamper his lifestyle, yeah. But you can't add life. You can't add time. Pastors of small churches are able to make the most of their time, even if they're given a little bit of an offering. That's not the greatest in the world. It's a small amount of offering. That's fine. Maybe that just that helps them pay bills so that they can use their time wisely. They can go to the old people's homes where there's some of their members are and talk to these old people. They can go and if you're if you're a parent and your kid is um, acting up or your kid needs some guidance, 
you're a pastor. You can go and help them out. Uh, your time is being paid for in that regard. And so you can use your time properly. Mega church pastors can't do that. Mega church pastors can't be everywhere. Now, you can maybe you've cr created the counter argument within uh within yourself for this time frame. Oh, but that's why there are co-pastors. That's why there are associate pastors. That's why there are music pastors, uh, youth pastors, all sorts of pastors. Here's my response. Guys, I've always had one pastor. I've always had one pastor um, in, in the churches that I've attended. I've attended uh, three churches within my lifestyle, uh, lifestyle, lifetime. And um, they were everything. They became everything. Just like the Bible says, you're Jew for the Jew and Gentile for the Gentile. They became everything. They weren't, you know, the job of a pastor isn't to um, delegate like that. The job of a pastor is to be every, be like Jesus. Jesus tended his flock of 12. And he even lost, his 12 weren't even the most perfect in the world. One of them tried to, one of them sold them out and committed suicide. The other denied him three times. So guys, uh, we can't expect so much from a pastor. Uh, they should be available, yes. They should make themselves available, but we shouldn't expect so much from them. Uh, and lastly, the amount of stress. So as I've been citing, pastors can't be everywhere, but their hearts are drawn to be there. When, um, when you're called to take care of God's children, preach the gospel, uh, disciple, and correct, and rebuke, it's very difficult. And being a pastor is very lonely. You don't have a lot of assistance. You don't have a lot of support. You might have your wife um, and your family, but apart from them, Sometimes maybe the church talks smack behind your back. Um, you know, oh, I can't believe we're paying him so much. We're giving him so much and he hasn't do this. Or why is the pastor always screaming at us? Or why is the pastor so strict on, on us coming to church? Why is this? Why is that? Um, and with this, we'll end it, the video. Guys, the response, you might be more spiritual than your pastor. You might be. I don't know. I don't know how this works. You might be more spiritual, you might know more Bible verses. You might uh, be praying in tongues, or you might know more of the Bible than your, the pastor of the church. You, uh, you might preach better than your pastor. You might do all these things, but guess what? You don't have the capacity. God chose that guy or gal uh, to be your pastor. There's something that God saw. Remember that God chose David and Samuel thought it was going to be his brothers, but God chose David. God chooses and he installs. It's not your job to question their ability, their capacities to be able to perform certain things. No matter how, how old they get, there are some old pastors who still announce and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ despite physical infirmities. So mega church pastors and small church pastors, we should after watching this video, I think we should pray for them. Pray for all of the, they call them obras, all of the, in Spanish, all of the churches, all of the ministries. We should be praying for these various ministries so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be preached properly so that uh, offerings and tithes can go uh, allocated to proper places and not towards uh, vanity or greed. We should be praying for every for for our men and women for our men and women of God who declare the gospel from the altars so that they can maintain their lives holy because guess what you've always looked up to your pastor everyone always does even the community you can be a, in a, a pastor can be in a community of atheists and whether they just they don't believe in God but still I've never seen anybody lose or not have any type of respect for someone in ministry. That's just my, these are my two cents uh, after reading this article from Relevant Magazine. So I know I touched on a lot of stuff. Um, let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. 
it could even be something similar to what we were just talking about or uh, your own perspective and I'll respond because I get the Google update. So like I said, guys, um, if, like the video, subscribe, uh, join me, Gazy, for the Outlet Podcast where we can together connect and recharge.